Hello and welcome to today's lesson looking at the equations of motion. Now this lesson is part of the AQA separate science GCSE in physics and falls in the forces topic. So in today's lesson we're going to try and calculate the motion of an object under constant acceleration. So we're going to try firstly state the different equations of motion found for objects, calculate values of objects based on the equation of motion, and then finally explain the conditions needed to be assumed when we can use these equations of motion, which falls into the following part of the GCSE Separate Science Physics course. So we're looking at the acceleration part of the specification, which falls within the forces topic. Now, this is actually common content with the, the combined science course, so it's actually the same for both courses. So, when you consider the motion of an object, what quantities can be measured by experimenters? What can you use in a mathematical equation to determine and calculate the motion of an object? Well, you can look at five different quantities. The displacement, which we give the symbol S, which is measured in metres. The starting or initial velocity, which is given the symbol U and measured in metres per second. The final velocity, given the symbol V, also measured in metres per second. The acceleration, the object will take, which is given the symbol A and given the units metres per second squared. And finally, the time taken for the motion, given the symbol T with the unit of seconds. Now we can place these different measurable factors into different equations to fully describe the motion of an object. We call these equations the equations of motion or the SUVAT equations from what the, the, the symbols spell out. Now, the SUVAT equations can be used to work out the values of an object movement when it has constant acceleration. Now, another name we can give to constant acceleration um, is the uniform acceleration. Now, an object achieves constant acceleration when it has a constant resultant force acting on it. That's Newton's second law of motion. Now, the most common example of constant acceleration in the real world is when an object is falling freely under gravity. Now, near the Earth's surface, any object falling freely under gravity has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. But other examples of uniform acceleration can be a plane taken off, a train pulling out of a station or a car on a motorway. In all of these examples, to achieve that uniform acceleration, we need our resultant force to be constant. Now, there are two equations of motion you've got to be able to use in GCSE physics, and there's actually two further equations we cover at A-level physics, which are an added to what we're going to cover in today's lesson. Now, like we mentioned before, these equations are sometimes termed the SUVAT equations due to the possible terms that can be found in the equations, S, U, V, A, and T. Now, remember, S stands for displacement in the SUVAT equations, not the speed, and D will be distance travelled. Now, like we mentioned before, there are two equations you've got to use in GCSE, but there are two further equations which are only covered in A-level physics and A-level maths. So what's the first equation? Well, it's an equation you've come across already. Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time, which we can have our units in. So the velocities are in meters per second. The time is in seconds. So acceleration has units of meters per second squared or meters per second per second. Now we can write that in symbol form, which is acceleration A is equal to V minus U over T, which is an equation you've got to memorize for your examination. Now the second equation, which you've got to be able to use for your GCSE examination, is the equation that final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared equals 2 times by acceleration times by displacement. And we can pop our units in as such like that, which has similar units what we've looked at before. Now, we can also write the symbol form of this equation, which is v squared minus u squared equals 2as. And actually, sometimes you can actually see it written in the form v squared equals u squared plus 2as. It's just a rearrangement of the equation written on the screen. Okay, but this equation is given to you in your examination. You don't have to memorize it. You've just got to be able to use it. But for a higher tier paper, it's very likely you have to rearrange this equation to work out a value, whether it be V, U, A, or S. So here are two equations of motion. Now remember, we've got to remember the conditions under which we can use these equations.
equations. And our assumption is that in these equations, the acceleration stays constant throughout the journey. The resultant force acting on the object is constant. Now, again, we said before, the most common example of this is the resultant force due to gravity when an object is in free fall. And when, in that instance, acceleration is given the term g for gravity, and it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, in examination questions, it's common for you to use these equations to work out acceleration, then be asked to work out the resultant force that causes this equation with the equation F equals MA. So, how do you answer equations of motion questions correctly? So, what do you do? So, step one, you write out the variables which you know in the equation. Step two, you select the correct motion equation, either A equals V minus U over T, or v squared minus u squared equals 2as. Now you know which one's the correct equation because there should be one unknown variable in the equation that you've chosen. Step three, you place the numbers into the equation. You make sure your units are in the correct form. So kilometers turn to meters, minutes turn to seconds, uh, kilometers per hour would turn to meters per second, and then you simplify and rearrange the equation as needed. Now, just to clarify in step three, it's always best practice at GCSE to substitute the numbers in first and then rearrange the equation because you obtain marks for showing that you can recognize the terms given in the question correctly. Now, step four, you calculate an answer placed in the correct units with the correct significance figures and then step five you remember what your assumption was in this equation and that, that this can only work if the acceleration is constant so let's look at an example calculation a student investigates terminal velocity by dropping balls of muddling clay in a liquid for a particular ball she makes the following measurements the initial velocity is 0.035 meters per second. The final velocity is 0.013 meters per second. The distance over which the velocity changes is 0.30 meters per second. What's the average acceleration of the ball during this journey? So you carry out step one. Write, write out the variables which are known in the question. Now it's my advice that you write S, U, V, A, and T down like that. You spell out SUVAC and you pop in... And what you know and you highlight what you're trying to work out acceleration so it's then step two you select the correct motion equation now we look can we use v e, so a equals v minus u over t well no we can't because we don't have a and we don't have t so there's two unknown variables but can we use v squared minus u squared equals 2as well yes we can because there's only one unknown variable a you then substitute the numbers into the equation. Remember, check to see that the units are in the correct form. You then simplify and rearrange the equation as needed. Now, you'll also notice it's easy to pop the values in, do some mathematical work with those, and then rearrange after because it makes the mathematics a lot easier. So instead of having to try and look at what v squared minus u squared might be when you rearrange, just pop the numbers in, and then you work out what the actual term of v squared minus u squared is, it's minus 0.122331, then you divide it by the 2s value, which is 2 times by 0.3, so it becomes that value divided by 0.6. It's a lot easier to do the mathematics if you simplify the terms by putting in the numbers and then doing some mathematical work on it first before you rearrange. Then step four, you calculate an answer and you place it in the correct units with the correct significant figures. Now, if you do that sum that you see on the screen, you'll see A equals minus 0.203885. Now, there's no unit on that and it's not the correct number significant figures, so you'll lose marks in your examination. So you should write it with units. Now, we know acceleration will be meters per second squared, but we also look at the question and you go two significant figures for all of the terms you were given in the question, 0 0.035, 0 0.013, 0 0.30. So you write it to two significant figures, and there's your answer, minus 0 0.20 meters per second squared. Now you'll notice, why is it a minus term? Well, a negative acceleration can mean either the object's moving in the opposite direction, or the object slowing down. It's decelerating. Now you can see from the question that it's got an initial velocity larger than the final velocity. So in this instance, a negative acceleration means the object is slowing down. 
Now, let's look at another question. A van travelling at 23 metres per second starts decelerating uniformly at 2.0 metres per second squared as it heads towards a built-up area 112 metres away. What will its speed be when it reaches the built-up area? So, step one, you'll write out the variables which are known in the question, S, U, V, A and T. You'll notice we don't have V, we don't have T, but we want to work out what V is. We want to work out what the speed will be at the end of the journey. So you then select the correct equation, but we can't use A equals V minus U over T, because there's two unknown variables there, there's V and there's T. So we've got to use V squared minus U squared equals 2AS. You then, like we said before, Put the numbers in, and then before you try and rearrange, you make sure you do your mathematical terms. So instead of just trying to take 23 squared across, work out what 23 squared is, 529, and take it to the other side of the equation. Now you'll also notice it's decelerating. So the acceleration is not going to be 2, it's going to be minus 2, because it's slowing down. So we, have, we symbolize that with a negative value. So you work out that v squared equals minus 448 plus 529, so v squared equals 81. So you work out what v is, and v is 9. Now you look at your question, you go, right, have I got that to the correct significant figures? Have I put a unit on that? If I have not done that, I've not finished my answer correctly. So the answer is V equals 9.0, because all the values given are at least to two significant figures. One's given to three, but we always go with the least value, so two is smaller than three, so we go with two sig figs. So V equals 9.0, you pop a unit on that, it's velocity, so it's meters per second. Now remember, the assumption is that this must have been a constant deceleration, which is what it says in the question. The, the van is decelerating uniformly. So, last one, we'll look at another question. The driver of a vehicle travelling at a speed of 30 metres per second on a motorway breaks sharply to a standstill in a distance of 100 metres. Calculate the deceleration. So we'll pop all the steps on at once at this point, but just have a look here. Step one, you write out the information you know about the question in the correct units. You find the correct equation. There should only be one unknown. You place the values in the question. You work it through. You give an answer to the correct significant figures in the unit. And you get an answer to be A equals minus 4.5 meters per second squared. Now again, negative can mean either that the object's moving in the opposite direction or it's decelerating. Now in the question, it's, it's telling you it's start at 30 meters per second and it's breaking to a standstill. So your final velocity will be zero meters per second. So in this instance, it's obvious to note that the, the negative acceleration means the object is decelerating, it is slowing down. Now you'll also notice it's best practice uh, when you're working through a mathematical question to try and make the equal signs line up because it's then easier to follow your working out. But also please note this, you follow the same practice in each question. You write out your values of S, U, V, A, and T. You write out what equation you would use. You substitute your values into your equation. You work through any mathematical processes like a squared or a multiplication you've got to do. You then rearrange it to get your term you would like to work out. Make sure you work out your answer. Give it to the correct and significant figures with the correct unit. So what have we learned in today's lesson? Now, previously, we've learned acceleration of an object can be calculated from the gradient of a velocity time graph, and the distance traveled by an object or the displacement can be calculated from the area underneath a velocity time graph. You should be able to draw velocity time graphs of measurements and interpret their lines and their slopes to work out acceleration, and interpret their enclosed areas under the lines to determine the distance traveled. You can then also use the following equation, v squared minus u squared equals 2as, to work out values in uniform acceleration. So if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson, you should be able to state the different equations of motion for objects, calculate the values of objects based on the equation of motion, then explain the conditions you need to assume when we use the equations of motion. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on the equations of motion in motion with constant acceleration and have a lovely day.